Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be starting a new series where I try to build the perfect Iron Man helmet. So before we can even print this we have to first find the STL files. So I got my free STL file from the Maker Pops on Thingiverse. It's the Iron Man Mark 85 helmet from Avengers Endgame. Comes in three different pieces, the faceplate, the top of the helmet, and the jaw and chin. Um, just downloaded these three files and uploaded them to Kira. So this was the faceplate, um, this is how I oriented it and printed it. Supports and the wraps and everything was exactly the same as you see. And it printed out perfectly. There was no, it didn't fail. Um, these are all my settings, so in case you guys wanna stop the video and look at them. This also is the chin and jaw piece. So I put a support blocker here and here because the ears really don't need the supports inside, so you can get rid of those. This was printed on my Ender 5 Plus along with the top of the helmet. The faceplate was printed on my Ender 3. And this was the top of the headpiece. Printed it upside down like this, just that way there wasn't so much support on the inside of it. So once I selected the files and put them into Cura, I went ahead and started printing them. And once it was all done, I had three pieces. The faceplate, the dome of the helmet, and jaw and chin piece. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you some of the materials I used. Uh, these sponges right here are sanding sponges. They're really nice for getting into different areas that regular sandpaper can't because they're flexible. So basically I just use this um, value pack is kind of how I go about sanding most things. I start with a 80 or even a 100 grit sandpaper uh, like this right here. These are the most crucial parts of sanding. If you don't knock down these lines with this sandpaper, the rest of the print is going to have layer lines. This is the way that I do it and it works the best for me. If you can knock down all those layer lines initially with the 100 and the 80, you don't have to worry about it and the rest is smoothing. So then I move on from the 100 to the 120, then the 150, and then the 220, just getting it smoother and smoother as I go along the print. And then finally I'll sand it with the 400 grit and then that'll be it for my dry sanding. And then once I get done sanding it, I'm going to stop at the 400 and then wash the whole print with soap and water. I also purchased one of these sanding blocks. Um, you can use these, it'll help. Uh, it won't kill your hand as much when you're trying to sand for an hour and a half. It just makes it really easy to hold. Okay, so I got the faceplate here and I'm starting off with the 100 grit. And I'm just going to go ahead and start sanding it. I already started a little bit, putting in a little bit of elbow grease and just trying to really dig into those layer lines on this step just makes the whole sanding process much easier. If you just take extra time with this grit sandpaper before moving on to a higher one and all you got to do is focus on hitting it and smoothing it out after this just makes it so much easier. So I, it took me about 
an hour and a half to sand the entire helmet completely. But after that, I really don't have to sand it any rougher than like a 600 grit wet sand after I prime it because it's already so smooth. So this is half of the helmet done. You can see how much shine is taken away. There's almost none. And any lines that are too um, deep for me to hit, I'll either go back and hit with an 80 grit before moving on to the 120s and 150s and 220s, or that just means that they're too deep and that's where the you know filler primer and bondo come in to help fill in the rest of the print. You can also use these um, little filing sticks and these are great for getting in the eyes and sides of the masks and stuff because they get the hard to reach places. Um, you can get these at a Harbor Freight or a Home Depot, I'm sure, or anything like that. And it just helps get into the eyes because the sandpaper is too big and awkward. These also are really great for working on the bottoms where the supports were. It'll just knock these right down. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the rest of the print with a 100 grit. Now I'm gonna take this 80 grit sandpaper and just try to hit some of those deeper, shinier areas. So as you can see, up near like the nose and kind of near the forehead part of the base plate, some of these layer lines are just awkward and a little bit deeper and uneven. So I'm gonna to try to knock those down and this will just help to make the primer go on easier and it'll give it less work to do. And I won't have to be sanding away as much primer. Lines like these, where it's really deep and the 80 grit isn't hitting it, it's just too deep. Those I leave for the Bondo and the primer to take care of. So I'm going to go ahead and hit it with a 120 now, and I just have to buff the entire faceplate. And then after I hit it with the 120, I just make sure that the whole helmet is consistently smooth. Um, I do this after every level just to make sure that I hit every inch of this thing with the same grit so that way it's smooth all around. Now I'm going to move on to the 150, just working my way up the grits, making it smoother and smoother for the primer to have a good adhesion. The more work that you put into the sanding part, especially on that first crucial um, step with the 180 grit, just makes this whole process so much smoother and faster. The less lines you have when you put on that initial layer of primer, the better, because then that means less Bondo, less hours sanding. I see some people, they put on Bondo first and then hit it with a 200, and that just doesn't seem to work for me. I'd rather just get rid of all the lines now before I even put on the primer, so that way every coat that goes on a primer is nothing but smooth. And I'm just going ahead and showing you guys this entire clip of me sanding it with the 150. And this is in real time, so that way you guys can see how long it takes me to sand with each grit after the 100. The 100 probably took about 30 minutes and that was me taking my time, just making sure I hit everything, smoothing out all the sides, taking off the extra supports that were left over, and you really just gotta buff everything with the 150. So once you get into these high regrets, it does get a little bit more dusty. Definitely wear a respirator, glasses, and gloves if you can.
make sure and hit all the corners and sides of the helmet as you're going along. Don't smooth them out too much because then you'll start taking away and making the gaps bigger for the entire helmet to go on. But just try to hit them a little bit with each grit as you move along and it'll come out smooth. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with a 220 and then a 400. You'll start to notice with this 400 grit, the sanding particles become really fine. It's a really fine dust that just blows around. So just be careful. Now that I'm done with this 400 grit, the sanding is all done. So now I'm gonna go ahead and wash this with soap and water. I'm gonna rinse it off first. And then I just use regular Dawn dish soap and a sponge. And just make sure that you really get a clean wash, that way there's no dust particles left on it before you prime it. Now I'm gonna wait and let this air dry before I put on the primer. So in part two, I will be hitting the print with the filler sandable primer and also applying Bondo in the places that it needs to be. I have a couple of projects that I want to get done soon before the part two, so it might not be a while. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.